All right, so we're going to go ahead and start the second part of Professor Kreiss's parent orchard problem. Um, so in the first part of the exercise, we came up with a linear equation, t of x, that gives us the yield per tree as a function of the tree density, x. And so the next part of the problem is uh, we got to come up, we come up with an equation, or a function rather, uh, that gives us the total number of pairs on a single acre given the tree density. Right, so what we have here, so just think of it like this. This is just a single acre on our farm, and each of these dots represents a tree. Right? And so each of these trees has its own number of pairs. That's what's given by this equation right here. Right? Um, but now we got to come up with the total number of pairs on this entire acre, right? So how do we attack this? Well, the the problem is probably more, uh, or the answer is probably more obvious than it looks. Um, so basically, the question: How many pairs on an acre? Well, recall that given one of our ordered pairs, that if there were 500 in, or there are 250 trees on a single acre we had 525 pairs on each tree. Or the way we would write this in function notation is t of 250 is equal to uh, 525. So if we were to plug 250 in for x into this equation, we get 525 out. That's consistent with the data we use to come up with this equation. Right, so if each tree has a certain number of pairs and we know how many trees that are on that acre, all we have to do is just multiply those two figures by each other. So we have the 250 trees per acre and the 525 pairs per tree. We end up with this figure here, uh, 131,250 pairs per acre. And what we actually see happen here is our units will cancel. So we see that we have trees over acres here and pairs over trees here. But we can treat these units just like factors and just cancel those out. So we see that the only units we see up in the numerator are pairs, and the only units we see in the denominator is acres. And that's exactly what we want. And I do have to emphasize, units are important, because if your units don't make sense, your answer doesn't make sense. So it might help you if you're not used to dealing with units like this. Um, so go ahead and actually write the units out to see if things start to cancel. And that way you can confirm whether your uh, answer is actually makes sense. So, so let's go back to this. This figure here, remember that's 250 trees per acre. That's the tree density. That represents an x value, right? This is an x value, right? This 525 represents the actual yield per tree. So that is actually represented by t of x. Right? This gives us our yield per tree. And all we did was we multiplied them together. right? So if we were to multiply x times this guy right here, we simply end up with, and I'm just going to write the simplified form here. Work it out for yourself if you want to see if it works out. We get something that looks like this. And this is a quadratic equation, right? Where this is our A, this is our B, and we do have a C on the end here, although it's equal to zero. So if you don't see anything on the end, then it's basically zero, right? And so now we have something that's in this form. And now, we can apply things like quadratic formula if we need to, things like that. Now, there is a question later on where they're asking for the maximum yield. That's the ultimate question, right? We want to determine what the maximum yield is. So if we graph this, well, before we do that, actually, let's give a name to our function. Let's go ahead and call that a of x, right? We're going to call that a of x because it's in terms of tree or pairs per acre. 
And so I'm going to add that to my little table up here that tells me what all my variables represent. So this function still spits out a yield, but it's going to put it in different units. And so rather than pairs per tree before, we're going to have pairs per acre. Right? So we're going to call that A of X. If we were to graph this guy, we know that seeing that the leading coefficient one point or negative 1.5, it's less than zero, so we have a parabola that opens down, right? I'm just spitballing here. I don't know where it intersects the x-axis or anything like that. I'm just drawing an upside down parabola here. A of x is going to be on this axis. X is on this axis. Right? <coughs> and they're asking for the maximum. So, what does it mean when they're asking for the maximum? Well, they're just asking for the very highest point on the graph. In which case, when you're dealing with these uh, quadratic equations, the highest point on the graph, or the lowest point, if you have a parabola that's opening up, is represented by the vertex. And you should know how to find the vertex by this point. I would refer to your text if you need any techniques on finding the vertex. Vertex. Right? And so finally, with the last part of the problem, there, uh, well, it's kind of like a bonus section, I guess, where they want you to devise an equation that gives you the max or the yield for the entire farm in terms of tons per for the entire farm. So you have to do a little more of this unit cancellation stuff like this. I made a little table here that relates all these variables to each other, right? So they specifically say that the, each pair is one half of a pound. Well, I go ahead and say that two pairs is equal to one pound, right? We also know that there are 2,000 pounds in one ton. So I write an equation here that relates those two units to each other. And lastly, I kind of made this one up, but it will make sense in the end. There are 70 acres on one farm, the farm in question. So that's how this unit relates to that unit. There's 70 acres on one farm. Just doing a little bit of division here, we find that if we divide uh, just by one side, we get these little fractions here that all equal to one, right? So we can basically multiply any number by, say, one pound over two pairs, and it won't change the value of the function. We're just multiplying it by one. We're not changing anything about the function. We're just changing the units, right? So much in the same way that the units canceled out here. So what we end up here with is our A of X is in terms of pairs per acre. right? Pairs per acre. And then we know that we have to convert from pairs to pounds. So we use this guy here first. So it's going to be one pound over two pairs. So one pound over two pairs. Now, it is important whether this is flits or not. So, and what determines, so I could have written this as two pairs over one pound, but that would not make sense because I would end up with pairs squared on top. Our goal is to get these to cancel. We want the pairs to disappear. Our end result should end up with just something in terms of pairs, or sorry, tons for the entire farm, right? So the process by which we do this, we, so the pairs would cancel out. So now we've got to convert the pounds to tons. Right, so the tons is going to go on top. One pound. Right, the pounds cancel out. Oh yeah, of course. See, there's not 2,000 tons in one pound. It's going to be, of course, one ton, 2,000 pounds. There's nobody else in here in the room with me. I came up with that on my own. So 
So yeah, the, still the units cancel out in the same way we're dividing by the 2,000 this time, right? Now, we have to go ahead and convert this from acres to units relating it to a farm. So we're going to have to cancel out those acres somehow. Multiply 70 acres by one farm. And those acres cancel out here, right? So what we end up here with is we go ahead and actually take our original A of X. We multiply it by, this simplifies to 1 half. This simplifies to 1 over 2,000. And this simplifies to just 70, right? So whatever 70 over 4,000 is, we multiply that figure by A of X, and that gives us the entire yield for the entire farm in terms of tons per farm. And that pretty much covers the entire problem. If this is the definitely one of the simpler problems. You'll get into more complicated mathematical concepts that you'll need to apply to the later problems. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about one of the exponential decay problems in one of the other videos. But this, uh, hopefully this gives you a pretty good idea of how to approach a problem, make sure you keep all your units in order, keep all your um, equations easy to refer to, which I did not really do here, but it is all there. And we just use the information that we're given to just chip away at the problem and get what we want. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know what you think. Da 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 da.